If you will, turn to the book of First Kings. First Kings 17. First Kings 17, starting at the eighth verse.
sports teams, you play a position on a team. Amen. Baseball, got short stops, pitches, positions. And I think about even the church. In the church, we have positions, we have things we need to do. Amen. I think most importantly, our position in God surpasses all any and all other positions. Amen. <coughs> I would think that is the case. When I looked up the word position, it said that as a noun, position is a place where uh, a place or where something or someone is located um, or has been put or placed, position. As a verb, it is to put or arrange someone or something in a particular place or way, position. And so in keeping with history, Women's History Month, I wanted to talk about a widow, a Gentile widow. We don't often think about her in this story because the main character of this story is Elisha. But I, I wanted to focus in on this particular woman. Now, I, I have to give you a little history because I need to let you know that Elisha, Elisha was a man of nature like you and I. And, and, and in the book of Kings, from Jeroboam to King Ahab, one king to the next had uh, done more evil in the sight of God than the one before him. Y'all with me? I need y'all to bear with me and pray for me here. And uh, Elisha, the Bible says, suddenly appeared in the days when King Ahab's government officially supported and worshiped Baal and other gods. So Elisha was sent to oppose vigorously both Baal worshipers and those that engaged in it. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. And so the book of James tells us that Elisha was a man of nature like you and me. And Elisha prayed that it didn't rain for three and a half years. Now, after Elisha confronted King Ahab and pronounced a three and a half year drought on the land, God directed Elisha to get up and go. Amen? told him to go and hide. Hide, uh, in other words, he told him to go east and hide at the Kareem Ravine on the other side of the Jordan. God was sending Elisha away from his comfort zone. Uh -huh. You're with me? Amen. 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 And so, he sent them to Kerif, the ravine, because I looked it up, I did a little study, and then I learned that Kerif was something that means to cut away, to cut up, or to cut off. And so that let me know that God had some cutting away to do in Elisha's life during this drought. I, I, I say that because I know for myself I have experienced some drought times, some dry seasons, and I wonder why God is this happening, and it is to cut away some stuff, right? It is to get rid of some things, and so he's dealing with us in a time of dry seasons. Y'all 
with me? Amen. 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 And so uh, 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 it was because, though, that Elijah's, because of his obedience, Elisha was playing his position in God. Playing his position in God. And what did he do? He sent ravens. And when we think of ravens, we think of uh, 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 birds of prey. But however, a raven is not. A raven is a graceful and buoyant bird, a songbird. It mimics the sounds of other birds. It sings. Amen. I just want y'all to know that. And so, but he, God sent these ravens to feed Elisha day and night. Amen? Amen. Because Elisha had played his position. He was obedient to God's word right. when God's word came to him. And so these ravens uh, were feeding Elisha breakfast and dinner, and then Elisha was able to drink from a brook. Uh -huh. Even in this drought, Amen. in this dry season, Rev, he was still able to eat and drink. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that the brook dried up. And once the brook dried up, God didn't leave him there. He went to Elijah one more time and he told him to get up and go to Zarephath in Sidon and live there. Now Sidon and Zarephath, again, he was sending them into enemy territory where people all over worship Baal. So Elijah, once again, played his position. He got up, as he was instructed to do, and he went to Zarephath. And as he got there, as he came to the entrance of the village, he met a woman. This is where I'm coming in at with this woman. He met this woman. And uh, the woman was a widow. So when he saw her, uh, uh, the, he, he, this woman was gathering the little sticks that you find along the side of the road. She was gathering these sticks. And uh, um, I need to let you know that Elisha must have come, uh, encountered plenty of women in his day. Amen? Uh -huh. Amen. And But God had chosen this particular woman. I, I, I had to ask myself, why, why, why this woman? She, she, if we look at the facts about her, we realize that the, she was a Gentile. She wasn't an Israelite, so she was not pure. Amen? She, 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 she uh, uh, lived in a heathen city, Zarephath, and uh, she was a widow. Widows are basically poor, so they think. Amen? Poor in materials anyway. Amen? Um, so she, she lived there. She was poor, destitute, Gentile widow. But God had chosen her. He chose her not just for a miracle, but he chose her for service. Okay. Let you know that uh, no matter how low you think you may be or how things, how dry the season you're going through, um, however, God is able to supply your every need. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And so this woman was chosen by God. I, I thought about uh, I thought about Esther having been chosen for such a time as this. She was chosen for such a time as this. Amen. She was chosen to supply needs for Elisha. Amen. And so uh, uh, this woman, this woman uh, needed to put away some fears. She needed to um, start and begin to trust God because I need y'all to know that she believed and all she knew was Baal, uh -huh. uh, uh, a different God than the God that we serve. Y'all with me so far? Amen. And so, and so um, God, though, was operating on her mind. Mm. 
-hmm. God was not just operating, he was fixing her heart. He told Elisha, I have commanded uh, the woman didn't even know. I'm sure it must have been a surprise to her in her response, amen, because I'm sure if you think about it, when you're down to your last, it's hard to give any of it away. It's hard to share any of it. But God had commanded her already, amen? Amen. I need y'all to stay with me here because I know it may seem like I'm talking about Elisha, but I'm talking about this woman. Amen. And so the woman uh, who was standing there, this widow, this destitute woman that was standing with God and didn't even know it at the time. Amen. But I need you to know that a woman, a woman that stands with God can be the means of rich blessings to those around her. Amen. Amen. And so Elijah asked her, please, would you bring me a little bit of water in a jug? I'm thirsty. I, I need a drink. And as she went to get the water, Elijah called out to her, while you're at it, would you bring me a morsel of bread? Bring me a little biscuit. I'm hungry too. But the woman, as I said, was gathering little bitty sticks. So she, we know she didn't have much. But so she looked at Elijah and she said, surely, as your God lives, I don't have much as a biscuit. I have a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in the bottle. You found me scratching for little sticks to make a fire, just enough to make firewood that would make my last meal for my son and me. After that, we are going to die. In other words, after I cook this last little bit, me and my child is going to start. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. you're asking me for a biscuit. And I'm sure this woman's mind must have been churning over and over and over to her in her head. What shall I do? But I need everybody to understand that God had already commanded her, right. amen, amen, to play a certain position. Y'all with me? Yeah. And so Elijah said to her, don't worry. Don't worry about a thing. Go ahead and do what you said you was, but first make me a small biscuit and bring it back. Then then go and make a meal with what's left for you and your son. Then he told her, this is the word of God. Uh -huh. The jar of flour will not run out and the bottle of oil will not become empty before God sends rain. Remember we in a three and a half year drought. Before God sends rain on the land and ends the drought. This woman had to have been a remarkable woman. She had to have a servant heart. Y'all with me? See, because it must have been hard, as I said. The last little bit for her and her, and her child and then to share it. But God saw her pure motives and rewarded her Amen. in astounding ways. Yes. Just like Elisha said, the barrel and the oil jar kept supplying food until Israel, till it rained again in Israel. Yes. 
This woman did just as he said. And everything that Elisha told her to the letter of God's promises was fulfilled exactly how Elisha delivered it. Now the story don't stop there. Later on in this same story, this woman's son became sick. And the son and the sickness took a turn for the worse. Y'all with me? And then he stopped breathing. In other words, this kid died. And the woman said to Elisha, why did you even come here? Why did you ever show up here in the first place? A holy man barging in, exposing my sins and killing my son. Here's where we come in at. Oftentimes when things go wrong, we tend to look back at the life that we led and we feel like now I'm being paid for. We don't have to tell nobody what that was, we know. Amen. Amen. And so I'm here to let you know that even God, in a time like this, he does not remind you of your past. Amen. Your sins, if you are a true believer, uh -huh. God has forgiven your sins and threw them yeah. in the sea of forgiveness. Yeah. I need y'all to understand that the, when this woman's son died, she blamed Elisha but she also blamed herself for her unnamed sins. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But Elijah, who believed the dead man in God, said to her, hand him to me. And Elijah, he took the boy in, in, in from her bosom and carried him upstairs to the loft where he lived. And the, and the Bible tells me that Elijah laid his body across this kid. He did it three times. And they tell me that he prayed with all of his might. And, uh, and he asked God, God, please put breath back into this boy. Why would you do this to the woman who opened up her home to me? You sent me here. But now this far. And they tell me that the uh, Elijah, uh, 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 after praying to his God, my God, please put breath back into the body. And then it tells me that the boy lived again. Amen. Elijah picked the boy up and took him to his widowed mother. And he, and he, and then he told her when he got downstairs, Take your son. The woman said, Elijah, I see. I see it all now. Now she's coming into the realization of what's actually happening. She said, I see it all now. You are a holy man. When you speak, God speaks. I don't know about you. But I'm telling you that Luke told us that if we give, it shall be given unto us. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Good measure, mm -hmm. pressed down and shaken together and running over, yes. shall men give unto your bosom. For the same measure, in other words, the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. I'm telling you that when we give to God, mm -hmm. or when we give to anything, yes. or to anybody, Amen. we need to do it from the heart yes. that's desired yes. to be with God. Yes. Don't give it to, don't give it away if it's begrudging, yes. because it means absolutely zero. Yes. I don't know about you, but I understand that this woman now had experienced the marvelous resurrection power of God in seeing her son restored to life. Here is what I do know. That if we were 
to ask people about staying where in the position that they are to be in. We can ask Lady Hannah. Lady Hannah had been antagonized with Bob Penny. Uh -huh. And uh, she left a son that she had a barren womb, but when she had a son, she left him in the temple. <laughs> and um, every once a year, she go see her son with some new clothes because she figured he done grew by now. And she would take him his new garments. But I'm here to let you know that Hannah played her position. There's a lady in the Bible named Josephine. Josephine had to put a son in the Nile River yes. to save his life. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. And then what God did was have her nurture her own son. Yes. I'm talking about Moses. Yes. Because Josephine played her position. Yes. Moses. Uh, Moses was raised by Pharaoh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Had to leave in flight because he killed some people. And then when he met God on top of the mountain, and God sent him, told him to go back to Egypt and tell them to let my people go. He told, he told God, I, I, I can't speak right. God told him, I'll be your mouthpiece. Yes, yes, yes. Moses went back to Egypt and after the plagues they let the people go and all the Israelites went down into the water of the Red Sea because Moses played his position. I don't know about you but I need to tell you about Joseph. Joseph he wore a coat of many colors and uh he was loved by his daddy. But his brothers didn't like him. His brothers plotted to kill him. Threw him in a pit. Had him sold into slavery. Then Joseph uh, was down in the dungeon jail. But down there in his dry season, he met the Lord that told him, you're going to be better than this. And he elevated Joseph to the governor. Yeah. And them same brothers, y'all hear me? Them same brothers yeah. that conspired to kill him. Yeah. He had to feed him. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it happened because Joseph played his position. Yeah. Man, I don't know about you. that God will supply our every 
the God that we serve, yes. your God, my God, yes. our God, will bless us beyond measure. Yes, he, will. he can move the unmovable. Yes. He can break the unbreakable. Yes. Yes. And through him, we can see miracles. Amen, that's right. He specializes in the impossible. Yes, he does. Yes. The God that we serve. Yes. Thank you. 